climb, I guess. Start climbing, Mary. Well, there's only one thing to do here. I climbed up the stairs and opened the attic's sole door. Upon reaching the top, I was confronted with another open doorway. Light was leaking through it. Was there a window up there? I walked closer, toward the corner, and... Welcome back to my masquerader. Hi, if you're new here. My name is Para, your host, and today we're going to continue playing Cemetery Mary. The last time we stopped, we were finally getting back together with Crovin, and we had so much fun, like, in the arcade or something, where we got the demonic book. I remember that. And the Blackwood Butcher is still out. And for some reason, I'm thinking it's Reginald. I'm not sure why. But hopefully it's not, because I remember Re Reginald very distinctly from the beginning. And I just, I don't think he was, like, a bad dude, you know? So... I'm pretty sure we're close to getting one of the endings, I think. I just, I feel like now, from now on, there's like no stopping point in Cemetery Mary. Last time I had to cut it off abruptly because there was like some construction going on inside, my, outside of my house, so... So here we have to go meet up with Crovin, who's waiting at the club with his friends, which I don't think is gonna go well because, I don't know, I, I know there's like a bad vibe around clubs, but maybe it's just not as bad as I think it is. I had to ride the bus into town without him this time, but that was okay. The hard part was following his directions. This club seemed like an awful lot of work to get to. But eventually I was able to find it, after I realized it was sunken into the sidewalk. There was a staircase leading down to the entryway, and I heard Crovin yell. <laughs> ah, there she is! As I cascaded down them, and finally met the people I've heard so much about. <laughs> Here she is! Cal of the R. Nice to meet you. It's... It's nice too. Uh, was all I could mutter out. They appeared more rough than I was expecting. Yeah, what's up with the uh, purple girl over here? Why she looks so deadly? Like, I haven't tasted blood in so long. Fresh meat. I mean, I knew that was the kind of look and crowd Croven liked to hang around, but maybe I wasn't as ready to meet them as I thought. All right, check them out. Fellas, this is Mary. Mary, these are my fellas. My dude over there is Theodore. The other gal over there is Zapara. Oh, so, oh yeah, and the last one, um, that girl he was talking to in front of the cemetery, when I was re-editing it, I realized that I, I said it wrong, and I think it's not Valis, I think it's Vasilis, right? The other girl in front of the cemetery? I guess that's tell me in the comments below if I'm right, because I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. My other gal over there is Zapara. Yo. Aw, she's kind of cute, Croven. In a scary kind of way. Yeah. Creepy cute, as they say. I like her eyes. They're just screaming, like, Hey, looky, I've got a demon inside me. I like her horns, too. Really sells the look. <laughs> oh, how dare you? How d I'm not possessed. You're possessed. Crovin's friends. I wasn't sure how to feel about their... Compliments. Or how they were looking at me. I felt as if they were eyeing me down, and they stood off mostly to Crovin's other side. I wish they stopped looking at me like that. I wasn't really sure what to say. All right, all right, all right. What are we waiting for then? Let's get in there. I peered around Crovin and his pals. There was a bouncer in front of the door. He seemed like a giant compared to us. I could also see that he was kind of glaring at us. I whispered over to Crovin. Is... Is that guy going to let us in? Huh? Oh, no, definitely not. It's cool though. I'm going to be a distraction. Then you guys run in, and I'll find my own way in. Huh? We've done it plenty of times before, so don't worry about it. I promise it's gonna be okay. If you say so, I trust you, Crovin. I mean, you seem to know your way around this better than I do. That a girl! It's easy. You don't even have to do anything. Except to go with the flow. I watched as Crovin walked right up to the bouncer, and promptly kicked his... Oh dear. Crovin then zipped right past us, the bouncer charging down his path, missing the rest of us by a hair. Before I could even call out to him, I felt a tug in my arm as Theodore and Zapara pulled me to the floor, to the door. Come on, dumbass! That's our opening! And I was brought inside without any more protest. I forgot how lead clubs are supposed to be. I mean, I've never been in one before, and I had expected them to be loud, of course, but I didn't like the way the music felt as if it pumped through my ears made my bones shake. It was pretty dark, and there was also plenty of colorful strobing lights about. There was a large dance floor, and a DJ booth, and a bar off to the side, and plenty of people were up and dancing. We had only been there a few minutes, but I could already feel how humid the atmosphere was. This is so loud! <laughs> and there was no doubt it would only start feeling more apparent as the night went on. 
I looked around us. Crovin wasn't anywhere, and I was stuck here with his friends. They were talking to each other, but I couldn't hear any of what they were saying over the booming music. They seemed to hear each other just fine, though. Eventually, they started walking somewhere. I chilled close behind them, not wanting to lose them in the crowd of people. They sat down at a table, and I awkwardly squeezed in next to them. To my surprise, Theodore took out a cigarette and a lighter. I wasn't sure if he was allowed to smoke in here, but I felt too intimidated to question it. Especially to someone I didn't know. I was also starting to worry about Crovin. He still wasn't here yet. I considered taking out my phone and calling him just to be safe, but before I knew it, he was heading to our table. He even had a drink in his hand. I was astonished as he sat down next to us, as if nothing happened. Jeez, can you believe these assholes? Oh, I can believe it. Especially when it comes to you. Hey, shut up! I don't understand why it's always gotta be like this. I'm giving them money after all. Shouldn't that be enough for them? How did you get back here anyways? Nah, don't worry about it, Mars. I got it all under control. <laughs> he says that. I say it because it's true, you freaking d <laughs> What is- Stop! With the, all the cursing! I'm just gonna have to like beep it all out. <laughs> so, what were we talking about over here? Nothing. We were just waiting for you to show up. Aw, oh, waiting on little old me. That's so sweet. So sweet I could puke. Oh, again? Shut the frick up! Crowman and his friends laughed amongst each other. Anyone could see how close they were just with a quick glance at them right now. They seemed to make him happy. Happier than I'd seen him in a while. I'd like seeing Crowman interacting with them and seeing how well they got along. But that just made me feel like even more of an outsider, sitting amongst them all. So merry, was it? Theodore took a long drag of his cigarette and then blew it right in my face. I tried to keep a polite demeanor as he did so. What did you do? Huh? Sorry, what? Care about damn music. I I'm sorry, I don't understand. It's an easy question, ain't it? What did you do? What do... I... do? What's your job, sweetheart? Oh, I, uh... Uh... I'm currently not working. I used to be a waitress. But it only lasted a little while. I'm, uh... Not the best when it comes to people, I guess. Luckily, I've been able to stay with Crovin while I try to sort things out. He's been very generous letting me stay. Oh, Crovin's letting you have it easy, huh? You mooch off him, then. You're playing things smart, if you are. What's he bought for you, huh? Huh? If it's a jacuzzi, can I try it? Hey, knock it off. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's not like that. Unless it is. Does Crovin think I'm mooching off or something? What does what mooching... Mo mooching off mean? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> you would say that, huh? I'm not following. Don't worry about it. Zap's just a freaking idiot. Yeah, says you. Point proven. Anyways, so Mars, where'd you get those eyes, huh? Oh, uh... My parents gave them to me? Yeah, dude, what else? <laughs> Ah, jeez. Must have been a disappointing present. If my mama gave me eyes like a dead fish, I am bawling. I hope they kept the receipt. She's she's just joshing you. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah, I'm just having a bit of fun. I think Mary's too nice of a name for her, though. Nice? Nice like soft. It's too soft. Like a pansy. If she's gonna be hanging with us, she needs a cool name. Should we call her Mars, too, then? Buzz off. Only I'm allowed to call her that. Yeah, yeah, Crovin writes, Crovin writes. Oh, whoa, I know. We can call her Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, hold on now. It's pretty fitting, I think. You, you think I'm scary? Oh, definitely. Like, I'm scared when I go to sleep tonight, you'll be standing at the foot of my mattress. Oh no, I skipped accidentally. No, 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 no. And you'll say something like, only a week remains. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I guess I could kind of see that. You can? You what? Uh, what? She ever do that to you, Crovin? <laughs> nah, nah. I'm just joking. Mary's too soft. She's like a marshmallow. Well, you know what we do with marshmallows, right? I felt weird. Everything just felt like too much. Like, there wasn't enough room for everything that was happening. The lights, the music, the people. 
province friends. It was all a bit too much for me. I need to... Excuse me, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Oh, that's it! She's like, um, like, like Bloody Mary. Sneaking into the bathroom to take her next victim to the mirror? Be easy on him, won't ya? The lights in the bathroom ain't that good, so you'll scare the shit out of someone looking like that. Thanks, Zapara, Zapara. I got up from the table and squared my way through the crowd, looking for the ladies' room. Should you go to a club by yourself? Like, a club's bathroom by yourself? That does not seem like the smartest idea, I'm not gonna lie. I had begun to regret coming here, even if it weren't for the way his friends were talking. I wasn't a fan of the atmosphere. It was all so loud and so bright. I never liked this kind of stuff. Why did I come again? I went into the bathroom, and only there did I realize how sweaty I was. It felt gross. I went over to one of the sinks and rinsed my hands and face with some cold water. Crovin never told me his friends were like that. When he used to describe them to me, they always seemed so much nicer through his words. Although, should I have expected any different? I, I always knew they were the kind of people Crovin liked to hang out with. I don't know why. Crovin's such a nice person. Even if he hasn't been the nicest lately. Still, Crovin being moody? He doesn't mean it. He doesn't mean it. Just because he's been cranky lately, that doesn't mean he means to hurt my feelings. I know that he doesn't try to, but these people. I had just met them, and yet, the way they talked to me? Crovin didn't even seem to mind it that much. Maybe... Maybe I was the problem then. I... I probably shouldn't have taken things so seriously. Before I could have my thoughts to myself much longer though, someone opened the stalls behind me. I hadn't even noticed someone was there. It's a good thing I wasn't thinking out loud. She approached the sink to wash her hands, and I realized it was... Twyla? Twyla? I was right. Oh, hey. Didn't expect to see you here. Doesn't really seem like your type of event. No offense. I could say the same about you. What are you doing here? I come here a lot, actually. Really? I wouldn't have expected that from you. Well, it's not a lot, a lot. I just meet with some friends here every once in a while. It's where they like to be. How about you? Covet wouldn't like it if he found out I was talking to Twyla right now. I don't know how Twyla feels about him, so it might not be the best time to bring him up to her. Oh, I was just invited by a friend. I had never been to one of these places, so I thought it could be nice. But it's, um, it's really loud out there. And my friend brought some of his other friends and they're... And they're what? I don't know. Uh, obnoxious, maybe? I don't know. That feels mean to say, but they feel kind of mean to me. Mean how? Uh, I don't know, like, comparing me to Bloody Mary and stuff? Gross. That sucks. That's why I'm here, actually. I don't really think I want to go back out there again. Hmm. I can do you a favor if you like. Oh? My friends and I, we actually sit in the VIP area. It's a lot more chill over there, for lack of a better word. Wait, you're actually inviting me? We haven't even known each other that long. And VIP rooms are expensive too, aren't they? It's fine. We're going to be working together, right? So we should help each other out. Besides, I have a feeling you're not really going to come to this place after tonight. So I don't think anyone will be bothered by you just being here one time. What should I do? Twyla's offer does sound very appealing, but Crovin invited me here. Can I really just leave him alone? I know he's with friends, but still. What if he starts wondering about me? And if he finds out that I'm hanging out around Twyla, he might get upset with me again. Our relationship was starting to get better. I don't want him to get mad at me again. What should I do? Well, okay, so I'm just gonna stay with Crovin for now. I don't want to go back to freaking... Zara Para and Theodore, whatever the heck her name was, whatever. But but I, I sort of like made up my mind the last episode that I was going to stay with Crovin, so I'm just gonna stay. That's very nice of you to offer, but I'm sorry. I wouldn't feel right inviting the people who invited me here, even if they have been a little nasty. Suit yourself then. Twilight then left out the bathroom without another word. I followed shortly after. I didn't see her after exiting the bathroom again. It almost seemed like there were more people than when I had entered. It caught me a bit off guard, but I tried to keep my composure as I made my way back to the table. Even though I didn't really feel like going back, it was the right thing to do. I was invited here after all. 
That's... No, I, I feel like I would just, like, say bye and just leave. Not really dump them, just tell them that I'm going home. Besides, if I went off with Twyla, Krovin might get worried about me. Because... He still cares. Yeah, he's gotta. I returned to the table, and Krovin clumsily got up to let me slide into my seat again. Is he drunk? He looked intoxicated already. Hey, sorry. Did I miss anything? Nothing much, said Krovin, downing two of those little shits he's drinking already. Oh, really? I'm waiting for him to throw up. We're betting on how much he can get to. I don't think he's gonna make it to double digits. Oh, is he okay? I'm fine, don't even worry about it. I'll keep an eye on him. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I try to. <laughs> Everyone's eyes are always on Krovin already. Mary. Mars. Mars, 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 Mars. Yes? I was just... Just telling him about the thing you do. But like... You know it better than me, so... Yeah, yeah, tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Something about the graveyard, right? We like that place, too. Oh, you do? I don't recall having... Ever seen you there before, but... But, well, I, uh... Uh... I leave flowers on lonely graves. Let's not say I sneak into funerals. That doesn't seem like a good idea. I like to spend a lot of time there, so I'm quite familiar with the layout. I like to leave flowers out on lonely graves sometimes. But I also, on occasion, uh... I sneak into funeral too! Haha! <laughs> oh, now, now, now. That's something I didn't expect out of, the, out of a supposed goody two-shoes. Talk about a party crasher. To tell them that, that nickname they call you. Oh, <laughs> some folk have started calling me, uh, Cemetery Mary. Because I'm, like, always there. And Mary is my name. Oh, that's you? I heard that name before. I just didn't expect Cemetery Mary to be all puny and polite. Oh? Yeah, I thought it was, like, some kind of uber legend, you know? We thought it was a ghost in the cemetery. Like, whoa, of the dreaded Cemetery Mary, she creeps amongst the graves of her victims. You could be next. Oh no, I'd never. Hmm? Now that I'm thinking about it, Cemetery Mary? I like it. Sounds like a band name. Mind if I use it? Oh, you're in a band? Haha, <laughs> nah. The only people I have to start a band with are these two chuckle. Oh wow, okay. And the only thing they know how to play is with my temper. Hey, don't say that, man! Yeah, you'd love us! Love is a strong word. Ah, don't be so freaking rude! Zapara hit Theodore with the ends of her sleeves. He laughed. Krovin laughed. I laughed too. I found it a lot easier to join in their conversations. At least, easier than it was before. I was kind of glad I had decided to return to the table. I still was a bit uneasy, of course. I did just meet them after all, and they were all way closer with each other than to me. But I felt like maybe after a lot of time, they could grow to be some of my friends too. I would really like that. I just wish they didn't stay that stuff before. That's all. Mean? Yeah. As the night went on, I wouldn't want them as friends. Mary, you don't need them as friends, no. As the night went on, Krovin had downed quite a few drinks. He was a hopeless drunk, flogged over the table, and only able to giggle to himself. He never used to be this bad when it came to drinking. I picked him off the table and told his friends I ought to get him home. They didn't protest in the silence in the slightest. Guys, my, my tongue is like swollen. What's wrong with it? I wished him a good night, slumped Krovin over my shoulder, and headed to the exit. I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to get Krovin out without the bouncer noticing, but to my surprise, when I opened the door, no one was out there. I was confused, but I also wasn't going to pass up the opportunity. I hurried along as fast as I could, what with Crow on top of me and all. We then waited together at the bus stop for the next bus to come so that we could get home. It was hard for me to tell if Krovin had passed out or not while we were waiting, but he got up when the bus arrived. I still carried him, though, just in case he tripped over himself, and we got on the bus together. Oh no, Mary. The bus ride was long and tiring. Krovin leaning over me, his breath reeking of overpriced alcohol. It was even harder getting off the bus. I still carried him because I know he needed me. Mary. Yes? Are you okay? Mary. He hiccuped. 
I never liked seeing him like this. But at least I knew that when he was with me, he was safe. Yes, Crovin? I love you. I, I love you too. And I really do. I've always loved Crovin. He was like family. And the first friend I had ever made. The only friend I had ever made. Hearing him say he loved me was something he suddenly did as the years passed. So hearing him say it right now, well, I wish I could say it made me feel very happy. It did make me feel a little happy, but I wish it was something I could hear him say when he was sober, too. I carried Crovan back up to his room and laid him on top of his bed. I think he passed out the minute his head hit the pillow. I kissed his forehead goodnight and headed to my own room. I wish I could have slept as easily as he did, but I had more to take care of first. Phone man! Are you there? I have a question for you. Yes? What did you do all day? I can't answer that. Why not? You definitely don't just sit on the phone all day. Well, of course I don't. Then what do you do? I can't tell you. Is it because it's bad? That depends on what you classified as being bad. Well, I mean, just bad stuff. And what does that consist of? Just because something is illegal doesn't always mean it's bad. And just because something is a law doesn't mean it's good. I know that. In any case, are you worried I did something illegal? Or are you worried I did something bad? You still haven't answered me though. What is it that you do? I look out for you. Good night, Mary. But Mr. Phone Man! It's been a few days since that night. When Crovin got up the morning after it, he had a humongous hangover. He was stuck home with me because, well, there was no way I'm letting him out when he seemed so sick. It reminded him not to drink too much. It wasn't healthy for him. He didn't really seem to care, though. Twyla has been texting me, too. I haven't really seen her in person since seeing her at the club, but she texts me often. Sometimes we'll agree to meet up somewhere, but... Something always seems to get in the way, so we haven't been able to yet. I feel bad, though. She texts me updates a lot. Of things she's wondering about. Weapons, methods, potential victims. But I oftentimes, I don't know what to say in return. Or ever really have anything to show her. Yeah, what are you supposed to say to that? Oh, you think the Blackboard Butcher uses, like, I don't know, a hammer or something? To take away his victims and he uses a shovel to disembody them? Like, what are you even supposed to say to things like that? I've been wondering if I should start investigating on my own. As to not let her down. But she seems so confident in what she's doing. I wouldn't even know where to start. And I don't even know how I would start anyways. So for now, I've just been staying home. It's been raining a lot, too, so... It's not the most apt time to be outside anyways. But even though I haven't left the house in a while, I've been able to stay entertained. A book and a cozy fire! You guys know how to start fires? Isn't that kind of scary? I started reading the book that Crovin had won me in the crane machine. Oh, no. When I saw the title, How to Talk to Ghosts, I figured it was, well, figurative. I thought it would be some spooky story about a with a clever title. But to my surprise, it is written as more of an instructional guide. It's a very interesting read. And I'm curious as to how they got all this information. Anyways, as previously mentioned, ghosts exist on a different plane of existence. That much is obvious. Yet, they can communicate with us, despite their beings existed on a separate layer from ours. We see time and time again their attempts to reach us. Perhaps it is because they are angry. Perhaps it is because they are lonely. Does each ghost exist on their own, or do spirits share a realm with one another, expanding and everlasting? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Or is there only purgatory, stretching for miles beyond what we can comprehend? There is our questions I cannot yet answer. For if I could, I wouldn't be here writing this right now, would I? But there is a question I have been able to answer. Since ghosts can make contact with us, I often wondered, could we contact them? Sure, you've heard of psychics and mediums and whatnot, but that is only half of what I'm talking about. Being born with an innate ability is a factor, of course, but I wanted to delve deeper than that. Despite where they may exist, they can clearly affect things in our realm. They can reach us. And like one-way glass, I know they can see us. But what if we could see them? Is it not enough to hear them? I wanted to see them, to travel to where they were. I believe that 
when you die, perhaps your soul can become unrestricted. But what if we could accomplish the opposite? What if a living being had the ability to unrestrict itself before death? Perhaps this sounds like crazy talk, but you will... Oh. My phone is ringing. Hello? Yo! Where are you? Huh? What do you mean? I'm at home. What? Well, that's lame. I thought you'd be out by the cemetery by now. It's kind of your thing, right? Well, I mean, it's raining. No? Nah, just a little cloudy out. Besides, I was gonna be heading there, so I thought I'd meet up with you or something. Then we could, like, get lunch or dinner or whatever later, I don't know. That sounds good to you? Oh! Uh, well, I can leave now if you'd like. Yeah, come on. I should be there by the time you get there. So don't keep me waiting long. Well, it looks like I won't be sick at home all day after all. I put down my book and made sure that the fire was completely out before going to meet Crovin. I felt so surprised, but it was nice. To see that he wanted to spend more time with me? I hope that this will continue. And when my parents come back, maybe everything will start feeling a bit more normal again. I hopped off the bus, arriving in town again. It was very cloudy, but the air didn't feel moist at all. Maybe the rainy weather would finally take a break. I made my way over to the cemetery once again. I hope that I didn't keep Croven waiting for too long. But I was a bit surprised when I arrived. The friends! Oh, goodness. End me. Hey, you made it! Mars? Oh! Yes. Yes, I'm here. Corbin's other friends were here too. Why are we waiting for her again? We already know how to get what we want. Hey, chill out. Mary loves this place. I figured if we were gonna be here anyways, we might as well invite her. You're breaking into the cemetery? But we're all here, let's go. We all stepped through the cemetery gates. Theodore and Zapara kind of walked ahead, but I pulled Crovin to the side and had him walk a bit behind me. Huh? Something wrong? I'm... I'm sorry, Crovin. But when you invited me to hang out, I thought it was just going to be the two of us. Oh! I see. But... Uh, this is still cool, right? I mean, you like them, don't you? No! What? Seriously? I... I don't know. Oh, come on, Mars. They're not that bad. Do... Do they even like me that much? Yeah, sure they do. Is this about their scary Mary comments? Uh, I think it is, right? She was kind of offended when they called her, like, Belay Mary and stuff like that. Yeah? I thought so. But, hey, th they're not like that. I promise. You just met him in the wrong environment, that's all. It'll be fine. All right. Dude, offended she was, this poor child. We started to walk closer to the other two again. Well, I'm glad Groven's not, like, pushing me off. I know the cemetery like the back of my own hand, but I wasn't sure exactly where we were going. Or rather, I didn't know where they were going. So, do you guys come here often? I, uh, spent a lot of time here and all, but I can't say I remember seeing you guys here before. Nah, not really. It's not quite our vibe, but it's good for a few things every now and again. Oh! Um, are we here to visit someone then? Ha! <laughs> As if! He'd never catch me here looking like some overwatered pansy. Even when I'm dead. Oh. Then... Why are we here? Ah, there it is! I watched as Theodore appro- <laughs> She's so cute! I watched as Theodore approached one of the old trees, near a usually forgotten corner of the cemetery. There's not a lot of graves here, at least not yet. And this tree doesn't provide much shade compared to the others. I watched as Theodore stuck his hand into the hole of the tree. I always figured that squirrels and birds lived in those, so I never went out of my way to bother them. But when I saw what Theodore pulled out, I... I was very upset to say the least. What? What is that? What's in there? What? This? It's just the good stuff. Dude, you doing drugs? Or, well, glad stuff if you want to get technical. Just needed somewhere to hide it that wasn't home for a while. You know how cops and dumbass landlords can be, right? And so you just... You hit it there? How, how dare you? What's the problem? 
It's not like anyone ever comes here anyways. I do! You can't just hide your... This junk here. Especially junk like that. What do you think this place is? This isn't just some park or stretch of woods. This is a cemetery. There are families here. Think of the children. I mean, nothing belongs in a cemetery unless dead or living bodies. That's all you need. You just couldn't find some other place to hide it? Is that it? If I had known this was here, I never would have let it stay. How could you even think to do something so disrespectful? This is someone's final resting place. How dare you try and taint it? Disrespect it. Treat it this way. Yo, Mars. Maybe you want to chill the freak out for a little bit. It isn't that big of a deal. How can you say that? How would you feel if someone came into your home and just started wrecking everything? I bet you didn't even think to learn a single name in here. I, I can't believe you even think something like this was okay. I won't stand for it. Whoa. H hey. Oh my gosh, Mary. <laughs> Paul's off. No. You don't deserve to even have this. Using this place as your hiding ground? We were going to leave with it anyways. Not soon enough. You shouldn't have even been here to begin with. You shouldn't even have this kind of stuff in the first place. It's good for nothing anyways. Let let go. Let go already. <gasps> I don't know what happened. I think I might have just pulled too hard. And I was suddenly thrust backwards. And the next thing I knew, everything was dark. Did you hit your head on a cemetery? And then, in that darkness, I heard giggling. And my eyes began to adjust to the light, and I found myself somewhere quite strange. Sunny? Is that, is that baby Sunny? Ah! Huh? What? Hiya! H Hello? Is that Sunny? I don't know what that is. She's so tiny now. What happened? To what? I, I don't know. I just woke up. Good morning, then. I <laughs> guess you're going on this adventure with me. Huh? Where are we going? I don't know. That's what makes it an adventure. Oh, uh, it sounds fun, but I, I was just with my friends, wasn't I? I was so confused. Where was I? And who's this girl? And are my eyes okay? Yeah, but we're friends too, right? That is like baby Sunny, right? Should I give her like a little British accent? Yeah, but we're friends too, right? I, are we? I, I'm sorry. I can't say I remember you. Yeah, you do. Come on. Just because I'm a kid doesn't mean I'm stupid. You're always here. I am? Am I? Uh, yeah. You come by to give me flowers, like, all the time. Huh. Oh, thanks, by the way. I think it's kind of overdue. Thanks. For the flowers, dummy. <laughs> Mama always taught me to say please and thank you, especially when someone does something nice for you. And I think he'd want me to say thanks too. So maybe, could I please have a teddy bear next time? Huh? The flowers are pretty and all, but I really, 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 really want a new teddy bear. And I think you chose a really great one, especially with your taste in flowers and stuff. So, pretty please with a cherry on top and everything? Wait, I'm sorry, please slow down. I'm still a little confused. How did I get here? Who are you? Oh, I can answer that one. I'm Sunny. I knew it. This is like baby Sunny. Some people here started calling me Sunshine, though. Huh? Where are we? Wait. Sunny? Sunny Day. Yeah. But Sunny is... Oh, right. I'm Mary, by the way. It's nice to meet you. So, that teddy bear? Oh, yes. Yes, I can bring you one. I'll add it to my shopping list so I can bring it next time I come around. But in order to do that, I have to find my friends again. Wait, so Sunny was like little? And obviously the person that like she was talking about was the Green Reaper with like the little unicorn horn, right? That sexy son of a... <laughs> they show up in Trick or Treat if you want to go check it out. I'll put a little eye thing in the, in the top or in the description below if you want. Maybe we'll find them on our adventure. Yeah... Maybe, but... Am I dreaming? I, I must be, right? But this... It doesn't feel like a dream. And Sunny... What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. I'm just... Trying to make sense of it all. 
Okay. But take it easy. You'll give yourself a headache if you think too hard. <laughs> yes, I suppose I might. Do you... Do you hear that? Hear what? Ma Mary! Duh. Oh, thank Frick. Mary, are you okay? Yeah, I... I... Ow. No. My head, what happened? You... Fell back on one of the headstones. Then you were all cold. Scared the shit out of me. I was gonna bring you to a hospital or something if you didn't wake up soon. Oh. What about your friends? They left. Don't worry about it. Oh. Uh-huh. I- I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to. I said don't worry about it. We- We won't hang out here anymore, alright? So, just drop it. I promised you lunch, didn't I? Let's go. Don't I have a concussion? Dude, you can't take me to lunch! I gotta go home and rest! Kermit helped me stand up. And once it was confirmed that I can stand without a problem, he began to make his way to the exit. But I... I had to check something first. I looked over to the headstone that I had supposedly locked myself out on. The name engraved on it... Sunny Day. Sunny. Was what I just experienced? Really a dream? Now nah, Barrett's ghost talking. But of all the dreams I could have had... I thought back to the book I read. How to talk to ghosts. Maybe, just maybe, I'd have to try and see it again for myself. But maybe it really was... Mary, come on! I'm coming, I'm coming! I hurriedly made my way to Crovin's side, and we quietly went to lunch that day. Neither of us really said much. I felt bad. I knew Crovin and I didn't grow up completely the same, but I had no idea the kind of friends he made were people like this either. Did he always hang around people who acted like this? I didn't know how to feel. The Crovin that I saw around these people isn't the Crovin I'm used to. Who's the Crovin I know? Is he just a ghost too? No, no, I shouldn't think like that. I just didn't want to think about it at all. We kind of went home together after that. I don't know why. It was just like neither of us wanted to just go on with our day afterwards. So even though we weren't talking, we both went home together. Yeah, time to rest our concussion. We stayed in separate rooms the rest of the day. Just did our own thing. Neither one of us felt like talking about it. Dinner was quiet, and I think the only thing I heard him say that evening was good night as I retired to my room. If only I was really going to bed then. Gee, dude, phone guy, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. The audacity of these motherfuckers planting all this stuff inside my cemetery, I can't even. Hello again. You're still here, right? Of course I am. Is everything okay? Yes. On my side, at least. Is everything okay with you? No. Today was harder than normal. Why is that? Things were just stressful, that's all. I don't really want to talk about it with you. I just wanted to be honest in my answer. I understand. I'm sure you are carrying a lot of weight on your shoulders. Wait, 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 Is the mystery number, um, uh, uh, Sonny's dad, the Grim Reaper? Is that who he is? My parents are already dead or whatever? I don't know, it's just like, I don't, it came to me because it, was, it had blue text and Sonny's text was blue and I thought it might have been Sonny, but I don't think so. I think it might be the Grim Reaper, right? Please, think things easy on yourself. I'm positive the last thing you need is more stress right now. It's funny you say that. Considering you're one of the things that worries me the most. Ah, I see. I shouldn't worry you more than I have to, then. Good night, Mary. Good night, Mr. Fullman. A day or two passed since then. Not much had happened, but I have been unable to stop thinking about my encounter with Sunny. It was just so bizarre to me. Out of anything I could have dreamt up. Unless, of course, had I really spoken to a ghost that day? That couldn't have been possible, and yet... I thought back to that book I read, but I don't understand. I hadn't done anything special. I didn't recite any chant or practice any written method. Why would I suddenly be able to speak to a ghost? I, maybe it was just a weird coincidental dream after all. I, I had to be sure. I decided to head back down to the cemetery during the morning. Even though I knew a general area of where everyone was, I didn't really have an idea of who I was really looking for. Just look for Sunny again. Hmm. I think you might be interesting. 
decided I sat myself down on the grave, by the grave, and then shifted myself into a lying position over top of it. This felt weird, but I had to know. I shut my eyes and tried to think of nothing more than sleep, hoping that I could somehow fall asleep soon. And I'm not exactly sure when, but I did. For I woke up to the sound of a graceful violin. Whoa! It happened again. Just like with Sunny, I woke up somewhere new. This is a theater, isn't it? It's soaked in shades of green. I had never been in a place like this before. It felt like a dream, and yet, not quite. It wasn't quite a dream, right? What is this place? Um, take a wolf, feel, listen. What does take a whiff mean? You want to smell the, the dead? Okay, let's listen. The sound of an eglet violin rever re reverberated throughout the theater. The violinist atop the stage continued to play, despite the fact that I was the only one here. It was beautiful to listen to. I felt as if I could sit in one of these chairs and listen for hours. But I know I did not have that kind of time. Still, what a shame to cut off such a performance so early. Take a whiff, sure, I don't even know what that is. I took a deep inhale, trying to smell what I could. Everything smelled faintly of lilies, but I couldn't see any flowers here at all, which, in my opinion, is a little sad. Such a lovely musician should at least receive a bouquet. Alright, look around. Anything on the seats? I was in an old theater. The seats surrounding me seemed dusty. It looked as if they hadn't been set in for, a while, for quite some time. There was no one here except for me, and a violinist on the stage. I didn't know if they noticed me, here or not. Regardless, he continued playing. Feel? Can you feel pain here? I reached out and touched the chairs. Although I could see that they were had a fabric covering, they felt like anything but. The dust did not come off onto my hands, and the chairs themselves felt like dollhouse furniture. Plastic-like. Fake. Okay, first stage then. Hello! I walked to the stage. The musician's image became clear to me as I did. They noticed me approaching, shifting their gaze onto me. They slowly stopped playing their violin. They placed it off to the side, expecting me to join them on the, set, on the stage. So, I did. I climbed up the short stairs that led up into the stage. The echoes creaked loudly in the huge room. The musician then gestured to an extra stool, hiding just behind the curtain. I grabbed it and placed it beside theirs. <gasps> Hi! Lydian Walton? The one and only. It... it it's... it really is you? Well... I don't see who else it would be. You're supposed to be dead, aren't you? Are you a ghost? I don't know. Are you? Me? Why would I be a ghost? You're here speaking to me, aren't you? What brings you here, my dear? Well, uh... Sleep, I guess. Sleep? That's a tad silly, don't you think? Silly? You're playing violin to an empty theater. Oh-ho! It's not empty. You're here, after all. Well, I suppose you have a point. Wait, I'm getting off topic. I, I wanted to talk about... Am I really speaking to a dead person right now? I don't know. Am I? Huh? Well, no. I'm not dead. At least I don't think I am. <laughs> you don't sound sure of it. You're the one always visiting us. You think you would know by now. Me? Visiting? But... I've never been here before. Well, maybe once before, but that's it. Nonsense. You're always here. I'd even say you're here more often than you aren't. I, I don't understand. Oh, I'm sure you don't, little flower girl. I suppose all those petals that find their way onto my stage just happen to fall from the sky. I don't follow. Silly, silly, silly. You're always bringing flowers. Don't you think we don't receive them? Wait, sorry. Are you telling me when I bring flowers, they wind up here? Seems so. Then I must... I really am talking to a dead person right now. Not very quick, are you, dear? That's alright. <laughs> Sorry, I just... It's very exciting to be actually talking to you. Yes, I used to get that a lot. Although, normally in a different context. This is... Wow. This is so... Wait. I'm a bit confused, though. Lydian, you... Yes? Well, it's just that... According to your tombstone and all... Yes, what about it? Well, if it's correct... 
You shouldn't be this young. You look like you could be my age. But how can that be? You died when you were in your 70s. It's true. Then, well, I guess I'm just having trouble understanding because you seem, well, you look very good for your age. <laughs> very funny. But no, it's true that I died in my 70s. I just like my looks better when I was younger. Can you blame me? I believe this was my prime. Wait, so you're telling me, Mary? And once again, I was ripped out of the strange world by a very familiar voice. Mars, what are you doing? You okay? Hey, Crovin. Crovin melted away as I stood up on my own two feet, brushing the dirt off myself. Well, this is awkward. Crovin, I can explain. It isn't what it looks like. It's... I was talking to ghosts. <laughs> Hello. Hi. No offense, but... Frick, were you doing? We have beds at home, you know. You don't have to sleep on the ground. You're not going narcoplectic on me, are you? No, no, it's nothing like that. I did it on purpose, actually. Why? I, well, it's like, um, I don't know how else to say it, but, um, I, I think... Yeah? I think I can talk to ghosts. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I can't. Don't laugh. I'm being serious. Yeah, no, no. I, I believe you. I believe you. So, did Jasper the friendly ghost invite you over for tea or... Crovin! I I really am being serious. I swear I'm not lying. If I, if I can prove it to you, then... Hey, 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 come on. You don't gotta be like that. If you're serious, then I believe you. But, uh, sleeping outside is kind of a little freaking dangerous, yeah? So maybe, like, don't that. Especially all by yourself. Aw, thanks, Crovin. You really care for me, don't you? Oh, right. Well, yo, Crovin. Crovin and I turned our heads and looked toward the cemetery gates. Theodore and Zerapara were on the other side. Thurda was waving over at us, hand high in the air. So Zerapara had her hands gripped tightly around the bars of the gate. She was bouncing up and down as if trying to get Crovin's attention. As if we couldn't already see them. Those <laughs> What were they even doing here? Crovin turned around and walked over to the gate to talk to them. But they still didn't step inside. I followed behind. At a distance. Yet. Yeah. Theodore. Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to show up. Us? What about yourself, bruh? <laughs> I'm always where I'm supposed to be. What you doing here anyways? I thought we weren't allowed in here anymore. Uh, yeah. But I saw Mars asleep in here, so I had to wake her up. Asleep? She's a freaking narcoplet or something? I don't even know what that means. Nar... Narcoplet. I'll switch it up and I'll put a definition on it. Nah. At least, pretty sure she's not. She just thinks she can talk to ghosts, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. Hey, 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 don't laugh so loud. Can she show us then? <laughs> I want to see. I don't know, let's see. Yo, Mars. Dude, if you yo, Mars me one more time, I'm going to be like, yo, Craven. Uh? It's Craven. I said Craven. I bet. Crovin called out to me. You want to show the boys what you can do? H huh? Show us you can talk to ghosts. We were going to go to a haunted place anyways. Haunted? Yeah. We were just going to dick around. Maybe pick up a Ouija board on the way there. But if you can talk to ghosts, then that's just as good, right? I don't want to go anywhere with these assholes. But I, if I leave Crovin by himself, will he get killed? Or taken by the Blackwood Butcher. I need to protect my boy. Really? Yeah. Maybe it'll be fun. Whoop whoop! Come on, come on, come on, let's go! No, I hate you people. I followed Crovin and his friends out of the cemetery. I'm only here because I have to keep Crovin safe. I wasn't even sure where we were going. But I felt as though I couldn't decline their invitation. Especially since things didn't end that great with us last time, and I didn't want to leave a bad impression. But it was fine. I was sure that if I just stayed close to Crovin, I'd probably be okay. Crovin, stay close to me. 
I followed close behind as they walked, talking amongst themselves. I wasn't really tuned into their conversation, too busy caught up in my own thoughts. And then, after walking a while, we entered a much different part of the city. This area of the city was, well, more suburb than anywhere else. There were actual, <laughs> well, houses. The kind with lawns and stuff, and not just apartments. They weren't anything too special. Just standard houses. I guess a house is worth it if you really value your privacy, but these areas of towns always felt so out of place. And since there were only houses here, no shops or anything like that, I felt like a trespasser entering this neighborhood. Even if all we were doing was walking around. Like I said, I would. I stayed close to Croven. And I made a note of the house they were approaching. And then stopped in front of it. Here she is! This house. It was a bit bigger and nicer than the others on this road. Had it not been for the state of dis disrepair it was in. You could see the cracks in the windows all the way from the sidewalk. Not to mention all the tall, ugly grass that probably hadn't been cut in ages. It looked like there was probably some sort of gate or fence at one point, but not anymore. There was nothing stopping us from waltzing right on up to the front door. This house is haunted? Well, just look at it. What makes this haunted? Are you telling me this doesn't look like the pinnacle of a haunted house to you? Just because it's old and abandoned doesn't mean it's haunted. But have you ever thought of why it might have been abandoned? People leave things behind all the time. It doesn't mean anything. Come on! No bickering! You're wasting time! Let's just go in already! We walked up to the front door. Carvin was able to open it with no resistance at all. As soon as the door was opened, an awful stench flooded out from the inside of the house. How long has this place been abandoned for? We stepped into the house and through an archway which led us into what looked like a living room. It wasn't shambles to say the least. I coughed after just a few steps inside. It felt hard to breathe, as if there was too much dirt in the air to really breathe properly. It was all very gross. Yuck. Didn't realize how freaking moist this air would be. How freaking juicy it would be. Haven't you been here before? Kinda. Doesn't matter. We're here, so go on. Do your thing. Oh, what? The ghost thing? Uh, duh. That's kind of what we're here for. What she means is that we'd like to see you talk to ghosts. Like you claim to be able to. Oh, right. Well, I mean, it isn't that easy. So far, I've only been able to do it when I'm asleep. And well, you just woke me up a little while ago. Oh, come on. I'm sure you can do it. You have to at least try. We didn't drag you all the way out here for nothing. But we don't even know if this place is even haunted. What if it's just a waste to begin with? Well, there's only one way to check that then, isn't there? Still, like I said, I just woke up, you know? I know I'm usually pretty good at, like, just falling asleep wherever, but I don't think I can fall asleep this quickly after waking up. Grava can sing your lullaby. Frick, no! You do it. Aw, oh, crow, you know my singing voice isn't as angelic as yours. Mars, would you be able to fall asleep if I sang a lullaby? OMG, OMG, OMG! Crow boy's gonna sing for us? <laughs> Frick you, it's not for you. Coven seemed embarrassed. I'll lay down on the couch. I'll try singing for you. That couch is broken. I did what he asked of me. Don't put your face on that couch, man. You're gonna get like the worst rash in existence. Everyone was already here, and I didn't want to let anyone down. Besides, it couldn't hurt to try, right? I laid back onto the old couch and closed my eyes, hoping that it wouldn't break beneath my weight. I heard Croven's friend begin to giggle amongst themselves as Croven cleared his throat, readying himself to sing to me. I must admit, I almost giggled myself when I heard him start to sing, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Although, I'm not sure I would describe his voice as angelic, it was pretty nice to listen to. The only songs he usually sings along to are loud punk ones, so it was a nice change of pace. And despite how dank the air was and how itchy this sofa felt, I actually ended up finding myself drifting off to sleep. Whoa! Suddenly I was awake, and I was in the bathroom of an old house. Did it work? Was I in the same room as the ghost again? Then maybe... Maybe this house really was haunted after all. Hello? I called out into the house. No response. I guess I better look around then. 
What if it's like a really bad ghost? I got up from out of the tub, careful not to slip on my way out. I exited the bathroom and onto the highway, the hallway. Looking down it, this house seemed a lot bigger on the inside, even though it seemed big enough on the outside already. I hope I wouldn't get lost as I started to look around. That it's a house, don't worry about it. The hallways were long and almost a bit disorienting. I had no idea what floor I was on or where the staircase was or any idea on how to get back to the entrance. But if I was here right now, surely there was someone's ghost that I could talk with, right? I'll, I'll find my way around, but where should I look for them? Uh, let's see, door with a crystal knob, sure. I approached a door that had a crystal knob on it. None of the other doors I had passed had something like this. It must have led to a special room. I grabbed the knob of the door. The crystal felt cool in my hands. I turned the knob, but the door wouldn't open. I tried again, but it still would not open. I decided to just give up on it. I did not want to force it open. Besides, if it was locked, that probably meant I wasn't supposed to be in there anyways. Okay, uh, a jar door. That one's open. I looked towards the door at the end of the hall. It was slightly ajar. I walked over to it and opened it all the way. I looked inside the room. There was a bookshelf with hardly any books, and a wore down cozy chair to sit and read in them, read them in. But no ghost. I closed the door all the way this time and left it alone. Uh crack door. I just I just believe ghosts live in doors. What do you want me to say? I approached the door with a large crack across the front. I went to go reach for the knob. Ah. Uh, there is none. It looked like it had fallen off some time ago. I tried to push the door open, but it wouldn't budge. I leaned over and peered into the hole where the knob should be. Nothing. Or rather, it is too dark to see anything. Oh well. What do you mean? Just push the door open. If it doesn't have a knob, then just stick your hand to the cracks. Broken door. I noticed there was a door that had been broken off its hinges. It was placed precariously in front of the doorway it belonged to, so that it still covered it, but wouldn't topple over. I walked over to it and grabbed the door with both hands. I lifted it up and then gently brought it to the side. I peered into the now open doorway. Little light from the windows leaked through, but it was enough to see with. There was an old metal frame single bed on one end of the room and an old desk on the other. Other than that, there wasn't much else. And there was no ghost either. I placed the door back in front of the doorway the way I'd found it. All right, so that just leaves the window. Guess ghosts don't live in doors after all. I looked out the window to try to get a better gathering of where I was. Besides, it was probable that the ghost would be standing outside too, maybe in the garden or something. I wiped the dust off the window, coughing a bit as it came off into the air. I cupped my hands to the glass and peered outside. It was still pretty hard to see much, but it appeared as if I was at least on the second floor of the house. I didn't see anybody outside though. Ghosty, where are you? But that's it, that's all the options. I kept looking, but the place seemed completely empty. What was I going to do? Surely I'd be waking up soon, and when I did, I'm sure the others would be expecting to hear about what I found. Should I just make up a story of a ghost I've met here? I mean, they wouldn't know the difference if I did, right? It seemed like that that'll be my only option until... Footsteps! There was someone here after all. I heard them run away from my direction. Wait, wait, come back! I followed after them, the direction they ran to. It led me to a door. When I opened it, there was a staircase behind it, leading upwards into what looked like an attic door. Uh, climb, I guess. Start climbing, Mary. Well, there's only one thing to do here. I climbed up the stairs and opened the attic's sole door. Upon reaching the top, I was confronted with another open doorway. Light was leaking through it. Was there a window up there? I walked closer, toward the corner, and... Oh no! She hanged herself! Wait. That looks like, uh, Nero whatever the heck. Yep, let's take him down. I have to. Whoever you are. I took a step forward. I reached my hand up to- BOO! Sarah Parrot, what? I stumbled backwards and fell onto the floor. Ha ha ha! Uh, dude! That was so freaking funny! Oh my gosh! You should have seen the look on your face right now! I got you so good, dude. What? It's not a dream? <laughs> what? Oh. Kevin! I started to sob. Ball. Quite loudly. And embarrassingly. 
Sarah Parra tried to talk to me, but I was too wrapped up in my own tears. I heard heavy thumps and a faint, Hey, what's going on? As Corbin and Theodore found their way up to the attic to meet us. When they saw me, both of them seemed shocked and upset, and quickly diverted their attention to Sarah Parra. Hey, 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 what the freak happened? Yeah, Dad, get her! She freaking asshole! What the hell did you do to her, Sarah Parra? Ugh, it wasn't even anything. I just pretended to hang from a noose. And gave her a little spook when she got close. She's the one making a big deal out of it. Dude, what the frick? Not cool, dude. That wasn't the prank we agreed upon, asshole. You think you can just do whatever the frick you want? Yeah, I do. Because I can. Ugh. Nope. I didn't do anything that bad. Bullshit. You didn't do anything that bad. <laughs> Too freaking far, Zap. Ugh, whatever. Do you want me to say I'm sorry? Is that what you want? Leave me alone! Mary, wait! I ran out of the attic. In fact, I ran all the way out of the house and kept running down the street until I got back to more familiar areas of the city. Tears blurred my vision, but I kept running. I think I was just being fueled by my emotions at this point. I was so... I didn't want to think of any of them. Enough is enough! I tried so hard to be nice, to be polite, to be their friend. But it was clear to me now that that could never happen. I could never be friends with people like this. People like... And to think Crovin continues to be friends with them. It's no wonder he's been so mean to me lately. And as all this was going on in my head, I still kept running. And running and running and running. Until... I bumped into somebody. Phone man? Reginald? It's either phone man or Reginald. Wow, is everything alright? That voice. It's Reginald, isn't it? Reginald? Uh, are you okay? Huh? Oh. Sorry, I'll get out of your way. Well, wait just a minute now. You seem awfully worked up. What happened? No, no, it's okay, don't worry about it. Not worry? Look at you! You're a mess! Pet, pet, yes, Reginald, yes, that's what happened. And they were so mean, honestly, Reginald, I should've just picked your story. I thought Crovin would defend me, but his friends are freaking assholes. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. That probably wasn't the right word choice, but you're clearly very distressed. Do you want to talk about it? No, no, I'm fine. I'll just go home. Mary. Would you like to come with me? Are you my fuzz- are you freaking foe man? Or- or the Blackwood Butcher? Huh? Why? Well, I was actually on my way to a little place that calms me down. But I think you could use a trip there too. Oh no, that's okay. Please, you really don't have to worry. I'll be fine. I would feel a lot better if you came with me. I wouldn't. Get away from me. Please. Well, he is pretty cute. <laughs> Alright, I'll come with. Reginald gave me a soft smile after I said it. Thank you. I'd very much appreciate the company. Come, follow me. Even though he said follow me, Reginald grabbed me by my wrist and began to guide me down the sidewalk. Oh, that's so creepy. Don't touch her, man. I was a bit confused on the direction we were going, though. It's this way? I didn't think there was much of anything on this road. Oh, it's a bit of a secret. But that's part of why I like about it. If it gets too popular, then that ruin the very peaceful atmosphere they have. I think it's better if less people know. But I think I can trust you not to tell anyone about it. Oh, alright. I kept walking with him, and eventually we reached a more desolate area of the city. There was no one walking the streets. And all the windows of the buildings we started to pass were all dark. No one had any of their lights on. There were no cars on the street, either. It was strangely barren around here. A perfect place to get murdered in. Say, what street are we on again? Are you sure we're going in the right direction? Yes, no need to worry. We're almost there. Okay. This is creepy. Then, at a certain point, Reginald stopped walking. He looked down into the dark alley. And then walked into it. Well, aren't you coming? I, uh... I felt pretty weird about walking down to an alley with no one around. On a street I'm unfamiliar with. With a dude I don't know. But he was waiting there for me. Oh, gosh. 
Okay, 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 okay. This is what we're gonna do. Big brain save here, okay? We're going to... Uh, Bam. Boom. Oh, bop. Boom. Oh. See what I just did there? Now if anything freaks her up, I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna save her life, okay? But I'm, for now, I'm going to follow him because I... I believe in Reginald, even though he's a bit creepy and maybe he's a little bit too touchy, but I gotta see what's down that dark alleyway. I took a deep breath and followed him down the alley. He was standing next to a door that I only really noticed because of its golden handle. He raised a finger to his lips as if to say, shh, and then he opened the door. Oh my! Oh, it was a coffee place. See, I knew my boy wouldn't get me killed. That's my boy right there. See, these are the types of friends that I need. See, Mary, this is the type of people you should have been hanging out with. And it was adorable. Pretty string lights were hanging from the walls and ceilings, and calm music played throughout. There were decorations of intricate tapestries and an addition of some rugs to soften the hard concrete floor. There were very few people, and they hardly made any noise as they spoke as if they were in a library, or trying not to disturb anybody else. Not to mention the aroma! Damn, that's some good-ass coffee! Even if I don't like coffee, I can't deny how pleasant the smell is. All of it together, it felt magical! See? I told you it was nice. This place seems so... delightful! How ever did you discover it? <laughs> that's a secret. But maybe I'll tell you one day. He stepped further into the building, Reginald closing the door behind us. Then, I followed him up to the counter, and he asked what I wanted. Oh, don't worry, I can pay for myself. No, no, please. I insist. Consider it a thank you for accompanying me. Are you really sure? Positive. Reginald ordered himself a coffee, and I asked for hot chocolate for myself. I felt a little silly ordering it, but the barista didn't seem to care at all. Even when I asked for marshmallows. Hell yeah, bro! After we got our drinks, Reginald and I plopped down on an empty couch on the building. In the building. Oh, so cozy! You got a styrofoam cup? Paper, actually. And no worries, it's recyclable. I think the mugs they offer here are cute and better for the environment. But well, how do I put it? I'm just particular about using the same things as other people, and that's all. I believe they even allow you to bring your own mug, but that's a little silly, isn't it? To bring a mug from home, when you can just make it at home. Because I would still need to wash it afterwards. And I'd look absolutely absurd carrying a mug down the sidewalk. Haha, <laughs> you've got a point there. Anyways, are you feeling any better? Oh, who? Me? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not crying anymore, so that's a good thing, I think. Thank you again for bringing me here. No need to thank me. I'm just glad you're feeling better. But if it's okay to ask about now, what had gotten you so upset in the first place? Well, I guess it's okay to talk about, especially since you wouldn't know these people anyways. Uh, where do I start though? Well, I spent a lot of time with my kinda cousin, and I recently met his other friends. And they're assholes. And I told them stop, but they didn't freaking stop. And now they're turning him into a freaking douchebag because he keeps hanging out with them so far. And I'm telling him stop hanging out with them because you're secretly a sweetheart. But he doesn't listen to me, does he? I told Reginald all about what happened since I first met them. I don't know why. It was like I had to start with one thing. But then that led into all the other things too. I told him about how intimidating they were when I met them and about how they disrespected the cemetery, and about the incident that happened with them just today. Already I was trying to block it from my memory. And Reginald listened, nodding along as I talked. It felt nice to have someone listen to me. And then I ran into you on the sidewalk. Now we're here, I guess. Sorry for going on like that. <laughs> I just, I wasn't sure where to begin. Or end. Why are you apologizing? I'm actually very happy you told me. It's not good to always let things weigh on you. You know, Mary, I must admit, I am not at all a violent person. You're not? That's a really prejudice. I thought maybe you were a serial killer. But oh, how I wish I could teach those, those adults a lesson right now. Where do they get off thinking that kind of behavior is all right? No, no, it's okay. I just won't hang around them anymore. But at least I tried, right? 
That's all you can do in this life. Try. But yes, don't worry about the people like that. They clearly don't appreciate a good thing, even when it's right in front of them. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. And it means a lot to me, too. Just then, I had received a text message. I took out my phone. It, it's Croven. Yep, Croven had messaged me. Mary, where'd you go? You're not at the cemetery. At least, I don't see you here. I'm not there. Are you looking for me? I don't want to see you right now. Uh, I'm not there. I'm not, th I'm not gonna be too kind, I'm not gonna be too mean. Actually... Put my phone away without responding to him. Good, good. I like that option. Don't respond. Reginald, are you busy? Hmm? No, not really. I'm just here, chilling with a cup of coffee, enjoying the snazzy music in the background. I was planning to run a few errands, but it's nothing that needs my immediate attention. Why do you ask? Can I come along? You... Want to run errands with me? Yeah. Please. I... I don't really feel like going home. At least, not right now. Well, if you're certain, you're more than welcome to come along. I would more than appreciate the company. Thank you again. Yay, I get to spend my day with Reginald. I spent the rest of the day helping Reginald with his errands. It wasn't anything too big. We bought some stuff from the hardware store, things needed for a bit of DIY car repair, wrenches, screwdrivers, antifreeze, oils, but nothing too big to carry. I also helped him pick a few groceries. He was running low on milk and eggs, but he picked up some strawberries too before they go out of season. It wasn't anything too exciting, but it was nice to be able to do something simple with him and enjoy completing these simple tasks with someone who wasn't trying to trick me or make me cry. Before we knew it, it started to get dark. I told Reginald I ought to get going. Get hope safely then, all right? I promised him I would. I love you, Reginald. Thank you, uncle. You're the best. And then went to catch the next bus home. Well, at least my day wasn't completely bad. Or at least that's what I thought initially. But once I made it home and opened the door to the cabin, someone was waiting there for me. And he was not happy. About freaking time you got home. Where the hell were you? You didn't answer any of my freaking texts. Of course I didn't. I... I'm mad at you. <laughs> she's, like, she's like a five-year-old kid. I ingy. You're mad at me? I'm the one who's supposed to be mad here. Do you have any freaking idea of what could have happened to you? Couldn't have been any worse than what you and your friends did to me. Ugh. Is this really what this is about? Get the frick over it, Mary. None of you even apologized. I can't get over it that easy. You all just wanted to make fun of me. That's true. You all just wanted to make fun of me. Ugh, seriously? It's not like I can freaking control every little thing they do. You should know how they are by now. Besides, what they do isn't my freaking fault. So I don't know why the freak you're getting so freaking mad at me. Because you let them do it. You, you never say anything. Maybe they'd stop if you don't keep letting it happen hey don't start turning this back on me what is happening stop Crovin. you're pissing me off maybe if you weren't such a sensitive crybaby we wouldn't be having this problem don't call me a crybaby <laughs> i can't believe you'd say that you're making fun of me again there you go making fun of me again don't you have anything better to do oh give me a gosh darn break you know maybe that's why you're so mean to me lately huh come again Frick is that supposed to mean? You said tan to my face! Hanging around such awful people. To wonder you become such a bad person. Oh really now? That's how you feel? I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. Uh I didn't mean it. I mean she sounded like she meant it. I didn't mean it. No, it isn't. What does that even none of these are? That's not what I but she that is what she meant. What are you talking about? Oh I she didn't mean it. Yeah! It is how I feel. <laughs> I don't know at what point you stopped, but you definitely aren't a good person anymore. I don't know who this person is, but the Croven I know would have never been so cruel. The Croven you know? Ain't that rich. Let me tell you something. The Croven you knew died with the other freaking... What is that? Crovos the Crovosians? Cro Crovosians. Oh, his family last name, right? Croven! You can't say that! Oh, I'm so freaking over this already. If you really hate me that much, why are you even still here? 
can't believe this shit. I didn't mean- Please stop fighting. Mom and dad are fighting again. It's so scary. Then maybe I should just leave if that's how you feel. Why do I say one thing and other things come out of her mouth? Maybe you should. And take all your stupid freaking baggage with you. Uh, what? Cormen stormed off after that. I went the other way and marched upstairs. I felt like crying all over again, but I think I used up all my tears for the day. Missed the phone, man! I was going to text the number again because, well, it's what I always do before I go to bed. But when I opened my phone, I was surprised to see I had a few messages from someone else. It was Twyla. I hadn't really seen her since that night at the club. Hey, Mary. I know it's late, so I don't blame you if you're already in bed. But I'd figure to ask you anyway, since it's not overly time sensitive. I'm going to be at the library tomorrow, looking for anything I can find that might help with our town's little problem. I figured you could come and help me research if you're up to it. Yeah, I can come and help. I think that's a really great idea. I'll be sure to be there first thing tomorrow. Well, I don't know if I'll be there that early, but I'll be sure to see you there. Mr. Phone Man, I had agreed to meet with Twyla. Maybe part of me didn't in spite of Croven, but it would have been a nice distraction, I think. A distraction from all the bad stuff that happened today. And I wouldn't have to think about it tomorrow. So you didn't talk to Mr. Phone Man tonight? Man, it's like the first time we skipped the night. When I got up the next morning, I heard myself out of the house. I wasn't even sure if Croven was still home, but I wasn't going to stick around long enough to find out. I headed to the library as quickly as I could that morning. And even though Twyla said she wasn't going to be around so early, she was still there when I arrived. Twyla? You're already here? Oh, hey. Yeah, I'm here. I thought you said you wouldn't be here so early. Eh? I don't think it's super early. But that's not the point. You're here to help me with research, right? Oh, yes, of course. Just tell me what I need to do. I'm gonna need you to fetch some books for me. Twyla handed me a list of books she needed. I worked in the library before, so I know they're here. I just want you to pick a few up, for starters. Alright, I think I can do that. Uh, yeah. I should sure hope so. Okay, rude. I took Twyla's list and began to grab the books for her. There were a few psychology books, but also some filled with, like... What's a periodical? Periodical. Periodicals. Am I just not... Can I just not read anymore? Is that how you describe it? I don't know. But what I did know is that if I kept carrying so many books at once, I'd topple over. It's... happened before. I began to hand them over to Twyla. She seemed very focused as she took the books from me. Sometimes, when I'd hand her a book, she'd slide one over to me with papers open. I would close it and go to return it in the proper shelf. It was only after a few books that I realized she was probably anticipating I read the passages she had opened to. Oh well. I kind of just considered fetching her books and shelving them back again absent-mindedly. It just seemed like the best thing for me to do, to be able to help. I doubted I would understand the information as well as she did. I am, well, not the brightest at times. Uh huh. You're distracted. Ah! Am I? You certainly seem a bit out of it. Is everything alright? Well, I, uh... I had a fight with a friend last night, and we still haven't made up. I see. Well, that's not going to help us here. Huh? If you want to help, you're going to have to pull yourself together. You know the issue we're dealing with is much more serious than whatever dumb fight you and your friend had, right? I... I guess. I... yeah, sorry. Dude, me and Croven's relationship is a very important thing. Are you going to be like this the whole time? I... I don't know. You can leave. Huh? Are you sure? I thought you needed my help. Clearly you aren't going to be any help to me like this. Oh, don't take it so harshly. I'm doing you a favor, if anything. I'll call you again next time. I need you for something. Just remember not to forget about all this, okay? Okay. I'm sorry I couldn't be any more help. It's fine. See you later. See you. I left the last of the books on the table for her and then headed out of the library. I wasn't much help at all, was I? All because I was too busy thinking- Dude, what the frick? <gasps> Croven? <laughs> what the frick? Freak, were you doing in there with her? Didn't I already tell you to stay away from her? What, did you just, like, not listen? 
Or not care. Ugh. You're just trying to piss me off at this point, aren't you? I'm... I'm trying to help her with something. Not like it's any of your business in the first place. Ha, excuse me? I'm your father, young lady. <laughs> that girl is definitely my business. Especially if she's talking to you. What's so bad about her? You can't just... Tell me to do something and not explain why. Why not? You don't trust me anymore, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just as well. Let me tell you this, then. Either you stay the frick away from her, or you stay the frick away from me. Uh, wh <laughs> Dude! Why is there so much cursing? I feel like I should just put a beep every single time he curses. Crovin stomped past me after that. He didn't apologize when his shoulder bumped into mine. He just kept walking. I hope that... Wherever he was going, it wasn't home, because that's the only place I wanted to be right now, even if it seemed like he would prefer I not be there anymore. I want to ask you something. You always do, don't you? Please. Apologies. It wasn't meant to appear sarcastic. Go on. Are you after people who aren't me? Am I your only target? Or... Are there more people than just me? Are you coming for them too? Please. Yes. Wait. Yes to which question? I'm sorry. I have to go. Good night, Mary. Don't come after Crovin. He's an asshole, but I don't know. Still my bro. Days passed. As days often do. Things in this house have been... Incredibly tense. I can't even recall the last time I physically spoke to Croven. Maybe it was the day at the library? I don't know. I really don't remember. It's not like I don't see him at all. But when we do see one another, we don't talk. It's really awkward. Sometimes when we find ourselves in the same room, one or both of us would just leave. We don't say good morning or good night. And if I see him on the street, he looks away. I wish things weren't like this. I just really want things to go back to normal. Back before... We had that fight. I really want things to be better. I want... Gosh darn it. You're both... Well, no. Because I don't want to say Crobin's in the wrong here because he wasn't even the one that did the prank. And I get it because it's his friends, yada, yada, yada. He should have known better. But Mary's not in the wrong either. What if we had just apologize and then we make him apologize after we apologize? Because he seems way too macho to apologize. I didn't mean to be mad to him. I should, shouldn't I? I know Crowen has been having a hard time lately. And I'm sure I haven't been making things much easier for him. It's partly my fault anyways. His friends don't have to be my friends too. And even if he wanted me to get along with them, I should have stepped away when I realized it wasn't going to work. I'll, I'll try to tell him something soon. When I know how and when to properly say it. I sat in the living room for the remainder of the day. At least until dinner time, that is. The fire was on and I was reading, but I knew I would have to start cooking something soon. Then, I heard Crovin come in through the front door. Still not feeling comfortable being in the same room as him, I got up to move to the next room. When... <gasps> Aww... Who actually was going to apologize first? Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't think this was what... I didn't think Crovin had the heart. I thought he was all testosterone, all macho, no friendly, you know? Huh? Mary. You know I love you, right? Like, even when I'm mad or yelling, I promise I didn't mean it. I really, I really, really don't mean it. Yeah, I know. I love you too. Um, are you okay? Dude, are we both okay? Is anybody okay? No. Theodore died. Oh! Oh my... <laughs> I mean... I mean, I knew there had to be like a... A thing to encourage him to apologize to us. Or Mary. But like... I didn't think the push you needed is Theodore dying. Oh, Crow. Dude, give your bro a hug. I turned around and hugged Crovin properly this time. I didn't ask him what had happened. He didn't seem to be in the mood to talk about it. And I don't think I was either. 
Are you going to talk to Theodore now? I helped him prepare the service. Or perhaps it was more apt to say that I prepared the service because he asked me to. You're so passionate about it. He told me. So I know you'll make sure he has the best one. It was just... I don't know if passionate is the right word. Hmm. Aw, oh, Crovin, why are you crying, my bro? I hope it was a nice service. I'd like to think that it was. I did try my best to pull it all together after all. I got lots of flowers and a nice spot for him to rest. Crovin was responsible for inviting everyone. But everyone wasn't a lot of people. I wasn't sure if it was because no one wanted to attend or what, nobody like Cro nobody like Theodore? Or if it was because Theo only had this many friends. I looked around. Zerapera wasn't here. No, it's not Zer. It's Zapera, my bad. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Embarrassing. Eventually, everyone began to leave. But again, everyone wasn't all that many people. Before I knew it, it was just me, Crovin, and Theo. Wordlessly, Crovin sat behind Theo's freshly dug grave. I did the same. Normally, I enjoy funerals. Or perhaps it's better to say, I appreciate them for what they are. But this one was hard to appreciate. I couldn't find a trace of pleasantness in it. Not even a little bit. It just felt sad. Crovin? Uh, he's not okay. I have nothing to be sorry for. Is there anything more I can do? You've done enough. Right, right. Crovin, I don't want to upset you, but if it's okay, I want to try talking to him. Mary, this isn't the time for that ridiculous shit. I'm being serious. I, I promise you that it works. And I've never been bad on my promises before, have I? Please, just give me a chance. Fine. If you're so insistent, then go ahead. But when you wake up, I want you to tell me something that only Theo would know. Because if you can't, I really don't want to hear about this ever again. I understand, but I won't let you down. I laid down atop of Theodore's grave. I could see Crovin wince as I did. Hopefully it would be over with quickly. And hopefully Theo would be in the mood to talk to me. How did he die? Overdose or something? Uh, call out. Hello? Is anyone there? I don't understand. Why can't I see anything? A lot of times for things to start going wrong? Well, maybe it'll help if you took that lampshade off your head. Huh? You're... Theo! Hey, dollface. Long time no see. He, look, he looks pretty good! Oh, Theo, I'm, I'm so glad you're alright. You sure that's the word you want to use? I will... <laughs> I suppose you're right. So, it seems like you're okay. Wherever this is. What, what is he watching? What is all this TV? Goodness gracious. Where is this? This? This is where me and Zapera live. At least it used to be back when I was alive with you all. Oh. You... You lived here? Hey now. I know it ain't the prettiest, but it gets the job done. I suppose so. You seem to be... You seem to have a pretty good understanding that you're dead. Why are things always green here? How are you doing, really? Well, you seem to be having a pretty good understanding that you're dead. Seems like the most con logical conclusion to make. Close your eyes, things go black, then you wake somewhere completely different. Not really a lot of ways you can go from that. Oh, why you're here. I guess I want to say I'm sorry. Kind of figured that whole ghost talking thing of yours was a bunch of bullshit. But I can admit that I've been proven wrong. Oh, that's... That's okay. I mean... I think I'm more sorry for you in this situation. So, how did this happen? What? All of this? If I knew exactly, I probably wouldn't be in this situation. Huh. I suppose you have a point. 
If I had to guess, though, it was probably because I drank too much. Oh? Yeah, you see? I was with Crow, Zap, and I, and it was, we were all chilling, right? Right? Having a few drinks, laughs all around, an hour or so passes, I'm not feeling so well. Like, I had a headache before, but now I'm feeling nauseous on top of it. I told them I'm gonna run to the bathroom, and I do. Freaking puke everything I've ever ingested, I tell ya. I start coming out of the bathroom, and man, I do not feel great. I try to call over to Zap and Crow, but it's like I can barely get my words out. And I figured, if I'm gonna be down for a count, I at least don't want it to be somewhere lame, like in front of a men's bathroom door. So I scrambled over to the pool table, interrupted the game of whoever was there, and lied down on top of it. Next thing I knew, I woke up here. You died of alcohol poisoning? And... You knew you were dead? Yeah. Can't explain how, but... You just know. I see. So... How long are you staying here for, anyways? Oh, uh... I'm not sure, actually. I could wake up any minute, now that I think about it. Which reminds me. I promised Corvin that when I woke up, I'd tell him something that only you would know. As proof that I talked to you. So, do you have something you can tell me? Yeah, I got a few stories between Crow and I. Pick your poison. The sleepover hat story. Okay, okay. The spiral staircase story. The orange juice story. Um, the sleepover hat story sounds so interesting. Sleepover hat story? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's a bit gross. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. I mean, like, how gross? Nothing that'll make you look at him too differently. Well, that should be fine, I think. Alright, so, it goes like this. Crow was spending the day with Zap and I. This is before you were around, by the way. Right. Night rolls around, we're deciding what we're gonna do, cause like, well, I don't think I'm allowed to tell you this part. Hmm? But anyways, so like, it's night. Crow and Zap and I are all back here. Zap says she's gonna call for delivery, and Crow's staying the night, because... Frick it, why not? It's kind of chilly day that night. This happens like, winter time. I offer Crow something to drink. He wants, like, coffee or something. Zap hates coffee, though. We only have hot chocolate. But he's fine with that, you know? I get some ready for him. Zap comes back. We have fun time, etc., etc. Door gets knocked on. Zap goes to get the food. Crovin turns to me, not looking so hot. I can practically see the greed in his face. I'm like, dude, what's up? What's wrong? He starts to talk, and then he grabs his mouth. And then I realize I should have checked the date on the milk I used for that hot chocolate earlier. So I'm like, ah, oh, freak, hold on, because honestly, doesn't look like he'll make it to the bathroom. So I'm looking around and I'm like, trash can, bucket, receptacle, whatever. Then suddenly my head's feeling pretty breezy. I turn around and crovin has got my hat and yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, uh-uh, that's so gross. Why didn't you stop him? Listen, I know it takes a bit to explain, but this will happen in a matter of seconds. Uh, I, I see, I see. And, and your hat? Is it... it is it... This one? Eh, <laughs> nah. I got a replacement hat. Chuck that one out the window immediately after it happened. And... Zapera doesn't know? Nope! By the time she came in, it was already over and done with. And you just carried on? I mean, yeah. What else would we do? I... Thank you for telling me this story. Anytime, sunshine. Oh, and uh... One more thing before you head back. Say hi to Zapero for me. Say, say hi for Zapero, to Zapero too. What? And go easy on her for me, okay? Now! Listen. I know she seems all firecrackers and dynamite, maybe even a little rough around the edges, but she's got a lot going on deep down. And I know she appreciates some help with that. I'll appreciate it too. I see. I'll, I'll try to talk to her next time I see her. And let her know you said hi too. Oh, yeah, please do. I'm excited to see my boys again soon, but... I'm hoping it'll be a long wait at the same time. Heh. <laughs> yeah. I hope so too. Crovin, I'm back! Before I knew it, I was out again. And I woke up to the sound of a word Crovin. Yo, Mars, come on. It's getting late. And it looks like it's gonna rain soon. Hmm, 
Crovin? Yeah? You threw up in his hat? That's so gross. <gasps> Dude, I told you I ain't lying, bro. I can talk to ghosts. Oh. Don't worry, Theodore. He doesn't blame you. It's a beautiful day today. And after so much talk of rain, I'd even bought my umbrella. But it was clear I wouldn't be needing it. The sun felt so warm, so much brighter today. I hope it would get more sunny days like this before things start to get cold and cloudy again. Because right now, it just felt so refreshing. I was on my way to the cemetery once more. How many people have you talked to so far? I didn't have any flowers this time around, but I was sure that was okay. I brought a teddy bear last time after all. Besides, I now have a different method of being able to visit everyone there. I try to visit Theo too, when I am able. I don't want to bother him too much. And even though he and I aren't best friends or anything, I can tell he appreciates it. I think I'll try to see him again today. Is there a para, is the para gonna be there? I continue down the sidewalk, admiring all the things that look so much happier in the sunlight. The birds, the flowers, the trees. But one thing that didn't was making its way towards me. And I didn't even realize until I heard her snap my name. Oh, it's Twyla. Gosh, I thought it was Zapara. Oh, Twyla. Funny running into you here. Haha. <laughs> I see you're out and enjoying the sun. I haven't heard a lot from you, you know. Haha, <laughs> yeah. But like, likewise, you know? Mm-hmm. But I've been investigating on my own time. Do I need to remind you that you're the one who offered to help me and not the other way around? Uh, I, I just, I've been really busy. Funerals and getting back together with Crovin, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you have been. All those headstones don't talk to themselves, right? Uh, I I'm sorry, Twyla. I just, I, I don't think I can help you anymore. Excuse me? Huh? Not help me anymore? You haven't helped me once! And now you've got the gall to back out before you've even started? What's that for, huh? Well, it's just... Just what? I'm not cut out for this. No, 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 no. Please, please understand. I'm really sorry, Twyla. I just... I'm not cut out for this. Even just helping you in the library, I couldn't do much. I couldn't possibly drag you and your investigation down. I don't think I would be much help at all. I... I should have told you earlier, I'm sorry. Do you understand? Oh, I understand. You... You do? Yeah, I do. I get it perfectly clear. Why bother helping me catch a threat when it could help you fill up that precious cemetery you love so much? Whoa, what? Hang on. That's not true. I'd never risk someone else's life for that. Yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't. Just like I was sure you would help me. I apologize for lashing out so. I'm just running low on patience. You might not know it, but I tolerate a lot of bullshit from a lot of people. But one thing I refuse to tolerate is people who don't keep their promises. So go on then. Run to your little cemetery, Mary. I'll let you go. But I'll make sure you keep that promise eventually. I'm sorry. Gosh, you say you're going to help one person. They freaking take advantage of you. It's just, it's just like a relationship. Leave me alone. Twilight angrily brushes past me after that. I felt hurt, to say the least, hearing what she thought of me. But I couldn't help her anymore. And it had to come out eventually. At the very least, it was something that I got over with. And I couldn't let it ruin today. I wiped my eyes of any tears and tried to regain my composure. I tried to focus on the nice things around me as I continue on my way. She even ruined my day. The birds, the flowers, the trees... The birds, the flowers, the trees. I couldn't let it get to me. She didn't know the truth like I did. And I couldn't keep Theo waiting. I continued on and up the way and entered the cemetery. Something felt off. And I didn't know why until I started approaching Theo's gravesite. Someone's there at the gravesite. Is that? Uh, hey! Wait! Is that Zapera? I followed them as they ran from me. They got out of my sight quickly, but I was determined to find them. I walked up and down the aisles, trying to keep my eyes and ears open, until eventually I began to hear something. I followed the noises, which led me to a tree. 
And Z Zapera? What are you doing here? I took a seat beside Zapera, patting down the grass as I did so. She wiped her eyes on her sleeve as I sat. Hi, Mary. Hi, Hi Zapera. I am. Um... Are you alright? Yeah, why, why wouldn't I be? Don't I look fine? You, uh, you wanted to see Theo again, didn't you? Hmm? No, no, I, uh, it's, it's really, I, uh, I'm sorry. I was, I was just leaving. Don't worry about it. Zapera, I, uh, I was surprised that you, well, what? You... Didn't show up to his funeral and all. I couldn't. Why not? You didn't want me in here anyway. You didn't want me here anymore. And after the last incident, I promised you I would respect your boundaries. But I guess I broke that promise anyways, huh? I want you to leave before you saw me at least. Zapera, so, I... I wouldn't have stopped you from seeing him. I'm so sorry if I made you feel that way. No one should ever be prevented from seeing their loved ones. It's fine. It's fine. I I had already upset you enough. It's just, um, nothing's been the same now that he's gone. And I'm not sure it ever will. It still feels so unreal. I just... I walk into our place and I'm ready to start, like, I don't know, hitting him with my jacket sleeves or stealing his hat and running away with it. And now, when I come home, it's all by myself. There's... But all his stuff still smells like him. Smells just like before we left for the bar. His mug is still in the sink because he said he would wash it later. And his hamper is still full because we were going to do laundry together. And the TV remote is still stuck on the couch because that's where he last left it. He was my best friend. And he's totally gone now. I'm never going to get him back. I'm never going to get him back. I'm never going to see him again. That's... that's not true. I promise one day you'll see him again. But not in this life. Isn't that right? I don't know what to do anymore. I don't feel like myself. At least... not without him. I'm all alone. You're not alone. Krovin's here and... I haven't talked to Krovin since. R really I don't even know what to say. Or what it would feel like. The three of us were always together when we hung out. It feels unfair without him. It feels wrong. It will get better with time. I promise you it does. Maybe it won't always be the same, but it will be better. And Zapera? He said hi. You're not alone. I know Krovin would want to hear from you. And I really think you two should see each other. Even if it's awkward. You should know that... Well, I'm not there for you, really. I don't even know you. So, Krovin's here for you. And I am too. Even if I didn't always think you were the best person, that's... Just because we didn't get along doesn't mean I can't help you through this. So... Aww, Mary, you're such a sweetheart. Thank you, Mary. I could really use that support right now. Aww. Yeah, of course. It's going to get better. I promise. I kind of feel bad for hating on them now, but no, they were assholes before, 100%. They'll take Bexies. I've got another question for you. I thought you might. Have you ever lost anyone? Why do you ask? I just want to see. Of course, I've lost people. I don't think there's anyone alive who hasn't lost someone. I've probably lost more than you could phantom. How did you feel? It always starts the same. It begins with devastation. But over time, those feelings, you get used to them. It's like a blur. You stop worrying about who died and start worrying about who's next. There is no rest. So you become someone who doesn't need rest because it isn't going to stop. You just have to be ready for the next time. That sounds... 
heartbreaking. It was. And it's why I'm fighting so hard. So that you... Don't wind up like me. Huh. It's been a few days. Okay, okay, should we just stop it here? This has been going on forever. I thought maybe I could get an ending in this one. No can do, bro. This thing is forever. Oh my gosh, that was so heartbreaking. Theodore, man, and Zapara. Oh gosh, how could I even... Oh gosh, and freaking Proven. That's sad, man. Like, I don't like his friends, but the fact that they died after his parents died, like, that's just harsh. That's harsh. There's only so much emotion that I could take. This, this game is not what at all what I thought or expected what it was gonna be. Like, at first it started off pretty typical, you know, the, the teenagers, the, the blood, the, the murderers, like, you know, I thought it was like one of those, you know? But it's getting more sadder. It makes you hate people and then love people and then you don't even know what's gonna happen next. Like, I could have never predicted that Theodore was gonna die. Like, how unpredictable is that? Well then, I, I guess I'm just gonna end it here because there's really not much else to say. I, I really wanna get an ending, but it's just not anywhere near. Like I can tell I still have a lot to go to get to an ending. So thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming to today's Masquerade. I upload every Friday, so if you wanna see more gameplay videos, then don't forget to subscribe to get an invitation to my next Masquerade. And click the like button to get this video to other people and to support me, your host, Para. Bye.